every once in a while a video game movie comes along and there's always that worry that it's not going to be as good as maybe some others you know some movies may <laughs> some video game movies are not good resident evil some are okay rampage some you, you might actually really enjoy tomb raider some do very 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 well detective pikachu and then ones like this one really surprise you and is somehow a mix of all those things Sonic the Hedgehog. So Sonic the Hedgehog is the story about Sonic the Hedgehog, who comes to Earth. He's actually been on Earth for a while, like 10 years. He, he, he came when he was a baby, and he is used to life on Earth, um, but he's still, obviously, like, he's very naive. He meets James Marsden's character, and it's th this movie is just basically kind of like a buddy cop sort of road journey thing. Minus the running, more like driving. When the first trailer for this movie came out last year, I was very nervous because that original Sonic design is nightmare fuel. And after watching the film, I thought if they'd have kept that design in there, I would not have been able to watch it at all because that was a really scary thing. This new design, or this more accurate design, is amazing. Since yesterday, since I watched the film, I have been on some sort of Sonic high. I've been... I've been playing Sonic games, I've been watching the Sonic X series. I honestly I don't know what's going on. I'm even listening to the soundtrack. Like what I don't think a video game movies hit me as hard as this one did. Now I'm gonna talk about the best thing about the film. Now, for the, for a couple of years, that it, it almost feels like something has been missing from the world of movies. And Jim Carrey has done so many different things over the years but he hasn't to me personally he hasn't been that good that same jim carrey who's crazy he's wild he's he's unpredictable oh, give me a big fat break this movie brought him back and oh my god i can't picture anybody else playing robotnik in this movie robotnik has uh, do you know what? It, it's amazing. He, he's a very fleshed out character in this movie. You know, there's like there's certain lines that he says where it's like, throw that in my orphan face. You kind of think, oh, okay, so he was an orphan. And then he talks about how when he was bullied as a kid and he, and he made the bully pay. It's kind of like, you go, Eggman. I shouldn't be rooting for you, but I am totally rooting for you. And just, <laughs> just the banter between like him, James Marsden, and Ben Schwartz, who voices Sonic, who does a fantastic job, by the way. Oh, come on! You've got car insurance, right? It's really weird because for a first movie, all the characters are really fleshed out in a good way. And you ca you kind of get this relatable sense with Eggman and Sonic. So, like, for instance, Sonic, he's like a kid almost. Near, like, everything to him is new despite being on Earth for so many years. He is like a kid. You know, it's kind of like very Deadpool or even Pikachu-esque where it's like, Oh, what's that? What's this? Can I do that? How about we do this? It's those kind of things and it's really good. Um, but with with Eggman, it's it's scary how intimidating Jim Carrey can be as Eggman. But at the same time, he can still be his zany self. Like there's <laughs> that there's a part in the trailer where he does the dance in his in his headquarters, and watching that in the film, I could just tell Jim Carrey must have been having the time of his life doing this movie, and it was good to see him be kind of that animated zany character again. It just reminded me of like when he was in the mask or even like me, myself and Irene. It was just this, he just gives off this wave of energy that's so infectious. Like there was a point when I said to a, to a friend Kyle, I said, I don't want Sonic to win this. I want Eggman to win, I'm actually rooting for Eggman here. But the film, like the, the music, Junkie XL does the score for it and the, the film is honestly a really good, a really, a really good kids movie. But there's something in there for adults as well. Going back to the music, the, the it's got that Junkie XL vibe. You know, if you like, if you watch Mad Max or even if you watch uh, Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, it's just got this fast-paced vibe, and it's really, really good. And then I think there's also a nod in one of the tracks to Green Hills. I don't know if it's on the soundtrack. I know it was in the film. And and the first track on the soundtrack is uh, like the first 30 seconds is like the Sega part of it and it was it was really nice to hear like the little kid in me was jumping up and down when I heard it in the movie 
And then when I came home and listened to the soundtrack, I was like, yes, this is this is amazing. I was listening to it while I was playing Sonic Unleashed, and it was honestly, I was I was just having such a nostalgic trip yesterday. Yesterday was such a nostalgic filled day. So obviously, like we we know Sonic comes from Green Hills in the first two minutes of the movie. We see the Green Hill Zone, and that that hit home. You've also got the Mushroom Planet, uh, which I think was Mushroom Zone. I can't remember what game that was from. And and it was clever how they incorporated the rings into it. So you know how in the games, Sonic's health system is based on how many rings he has, and in the movie, they've incorporated it really well. So in the games, if Sonic gets hit and he's got all the rings or if he's got the majority of rings, he'll lose them all, and he has to quickly scramble and get them, because if he gets hit without any rings, he dies. And in the movie, they incorporate it really well, so the rings are what he uses to sort of travel around the universe, I guess. And there's a scene where he gets hit, and he doesn't have the rings, and he's, he's, not, he's, he's knocked out, basically, so it's like they need to revive him. But when he's got the rings and he gets hit, the rings just go everywhere, and he scrambles to get them all. And it's just that fa it's just those little details in the movie that I love, you know, it's like I mentioned earlier on about Eggman, rub that in my orphan face. I believe there's a bit of a backstory with that, um, that's actually part of the bigger Sonic universe. And there's so many things that happen in this movie where it's like, if you're a diehard Sonic fan, you'll pick up on it and it's like, that ties into that, that's related to this. You know, it's like there's something that you see at the start of the movie, which I'm not going to spoil if you haven't seen it yet. And that made me instantly think... I know what we're going to see down the line. And then there is the sort of end film start of credit scene, uh, which is, again, it's going to set something up. And then there's the mid credit scene, which, honestly, I did not expect. And I, do you know what? I've still got adrenaline from it now, just thinking about it. I'm really excited to see where the Sonic series goes. At the start of the video, when I said, you know, you have some good video game movies, you have terrible ones, and, and then you have some that are good, but they might have iffy moments. Sonic, I, th I feel like Sonic is a movie for the fans because uh, like the people who I know I've seen this, they, they've all said it's a really good movie and I personally, I can vouch for that. I, I absolutely loved it. I grew up with Sonic, you know. Sonic came out in 92, I was born in 95, so it's been a big part of my life. And 28 years later, he finally gets his, li his first live action movie. And... Honestly, I I would happily watch it again. You know, um, I've been looking at some of the reviews of what people have been saying. Some people have have openly admitted they were dead wrong about it. Some people have admitted kind of stuck by what they're saying. And then there are some people that went into it with an open mind and was like, no, do you know what? That was one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it's got something for the kids. It's got a lot of things for the adults. Like there's so, some moments in the film when I was like, wow, they really put that. They really put that in this movie, you know. Well, it's really good. And I'm going to give Sonic a solid 7 out of 10. Um, the only thing I ever will falter on is the pacing can seem a little bit off at times. Uh, there are some cringy, cringy dialogue lines in there, especially between Eggman. It mostly comes from Eggman. The only thing that doesn't make it completely cringy is because it's Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey is on top form in this movie. I wouldn't say it's probably one of his best roles ever, but it's definitely good to see Jim Carrey come back into how Jim Carrey does things in the film world. Um, so I'm very excited to see where the future of Sonic goes. I hope Ben Schwartz comes back and voices Sonic, because, oh my God, he had me howling through the film. Ow. I absolutely love him, and I wish... I was more familiar with Ben Schwartz. This film's making me want to check out some of his other stuff. I know he did jokes for Rise of Skywalker, and I enjoyed Rise of Skywalker, so um, I'm excited to look up a little bit on uh, on Ben Schwartz and find out what he's all about, other than Sonic and C-3PO jokes. Um, but yeah, 7 out of 10. The only thing I will, like I said, criticise on is the pacing can be a little bit off at times. Uh, some of the dialogue in the movie is cringy. Um, and probably just the overall length of the film. I felt like hour and a half. I wanted more... But that's just my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Have you seen it? Comment below and let me know if you have. And if you are going to watch it, then let me know. And uh, yeah, so I'm very excited to see what the future of Sonic brings. Now I'm going to go play some Sonic the Hedgehog. And that's just my day sorted. So thanks guys, thank you for watching. Take care.